Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight we're headed to Appalachia. Before we get going into the woods and down the trails, be sure to sign up for my free email newsletter if you haven't already. You can do so on the main page of ravenreadshorror.com. It's a great way to keep up with absolutely everything I'm doing, it's the first place I'll go if YouTube goes on the fritz again, and you get some free content from time to time as well as early access to certain deals, publications, and content. And as mentioned, it's entirely free. Sign up today if you're interested. Without further ado, you know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. A Haunting in Appalachia by user Commercial Land 7881 posted to r slash paranormal. I have been visiting my grandpa in Virginia to care for him. I grew up going to this house every month during my childhood. It's in Ivanhoe, Virginia in Appalachia. It's an abandoned mining town. Growing up in his house, built in 1853, I've always noticed things out of the ordinary. For example, the room I always stayed in faced the front porch, the windows, with the rocking chairs outside. One night, I woke up to use the restroom and looked out those windows. I saw a black shadow figure sitting in the rocking chair, rocking it back and forth with long flowy hair. I heard a woman's humming. I ran back under the covers and wrapped my head in blankets along with my toes until I could sleep. This wasn't the first time I'd noticed that figure. Flash to other memories, there would be times in my sleep that I would try to sleep and I'd hear the floors creak. It sounded as if it was coming closer and that's when all nine of my grandfather's dogs started howling and barking. The creaking stopped and then I heard a breath or a sigh and the footsteps would turn, so to speak, and walk away. This was all before I was 15. When I was 15, I'm 21 now, I had a nightmare of the house burning down, and as I ran from it, I could look back and see that shadow hovering over the fire. I woke up in a cold sweat and set up the cot in my grandpa's room. At 17 years old, I went to stay for Christmas with my mom. As we woke up, we shared the same bed at the time, my mother went to the bathroom it has a window overlooking the Appalachian Mountains, and she told me that she heard humming coming from outside the window, and suddenly the bedroom door shut. Then she told me about dreams, dreams of the house burning. That was the last incident, until. I went to care more recently for my grandfather because he has dementia and Alzheimer's. He wakes up at about four in the morning and sometimes I have to bring him back to sleep. A week into the first time I cared for him, he woke up at about that time and sat in the rocking chair on the porch. I woke to the sensor lights beaming into my room so I knew to go get him. This time he'd been talking to the empty rocking chair, having a full-blown conversation about how the Confederate flag is mistaken for Southern pride or something. I grabbed his hand and helped him up, when a woman's voice angrily said, Let him stay, for it is cold. There was nobody, and then the dogs all howled again. I need to return soon to care for him, but I have to wonder, what am I dealing with here? What do I bring next time, if anything? Is this a danger? And mostly, what kind of thing am I even experiencing?
Growing Up in the Appalachian Mountains by a Now Deleted User. Posted to r slash backwoods creepy. I could give you countless times as a child and a young adult when I felt scared or paranoid playing in the woods. It's a beautiful place, and I spent my entire childhood getting lost out there by myself or with friends. Not literally lost. As kids, we never ventured too far, but you could actually see the progression of us venturing farther and farther out as we got older because of the forts and carvings we left behind. This one particular time, like many times before, my friend and I had just graduated high school. It was our last summer of freedom, and we spent the entire summer camping and hiking out there. We decided to try and find a new place to set up camp, and walked for what felt like a few miles before we came to a nice clearing. The area was relatively new to both of us, we got the camp set up and the fire going, and the plan was to wait until nightfall, partake of the devil's lettuce, and play Monopoly. For the sake of backstory, my friend is a smaller, really goofy guy, but comes from a family of foresters, and has always had a deep understanding of all the trees and plants that we came across. He had no fear of going camping out by himself. If I spent 10,000 hours in the woods, he probably spent 50,000. As for me, I'm a taller, sturdier guy, and as we got older, I spent more time worried about women and sports, and the woods became a place for small parties. Also, I never had the courage to camp out alone. In fact, the older me wouldn't go far at all when I was alone, because I could never shake the feeling of being watched, which was just paranoia, but still, an uneasy feeling. Anyway, camp is set, fire is going, but it's getting lower and needs wood. The sun is down and we're both cutting up and having a good time. My friend is sitting on this little chair that he always brought and loading up this makeshift bung and I was crouched, breaking some excess limbs off of some of the logs we had gathered for the fire. All of a sudden, this strong breeze cuts through the clearing I couldn't tell you if it was the suddenness of it or what, but my friend and I both stopped immediately and looked at each other. The breeze went just long enough to flicker out our fire down to a small flame. We both sat completely still in almost total darkness, neither of us saying a word. Across from us, on the other side of the fire, we could hear footsteps. They sounded like somebody was running, and would slow to a walk and then run again, definitely on two legs. By the sound of it, they were pacing back and forth over the same spot. Then, just like it started, it stopped with a softer crunch on the underbrush. I knew by the sound that it had crouched. I was crouched still, and I knew I was staring right at it in the dark. My friend grabbed my shoulder and said, Buddy. And when he did, I felt this surge of fear come over me. I could feel it and hear it in him. I had been so fixed on the footsteps and rationalizing what I heard that I hadn't even considered being afraid. But this was true fear. It was raw and made me feel helpless. I could hear my friend after a while grab some leaves and he dropped them on the fire. For a split second, the leaves covered the fire, and in that split second, we were in pure darkness. Then the fire sprang to life. We both quickly grabbed more leaves and brush and threw it on the fire. I got some sticks and logs on there, and neither of us took our eyes off the spot or moved much for over an hour. Finally, the leaves crunched, and whatever it was slowly walked off. Whatever it was had sat crouched watching us, without moving, for far longer than any animal would. It wasn't until after the footsteps disappeared that I realized the smell had disappeared as well. It smelled almost like a paper mill, spoiled eggs almost. For the rest of the night, besides whispered remarks, neither of us really moved or stopped looking at that spot. Nobody went into the tent. 
and I had a very short, light sleep, sitting on the ground with my head rested on my hands. My friend never went to sleep. In the morning, we packed up and silently walked back home. To this day, we still talk about it. In the seven to eight years since it happened, my forester friend has not camped by himself out there. Not once. Haunted Airbnb in Lower Appalachia by user ABSML1994 posted to r slash paranormal. For this story, I'll refer to my friends as the bride, the maid of honor, and my niece, because this was a bachelorette trip. So it will be a year in March since my friends and I went to Chattanooga, Tennessee to celebrate my childhood best friend's marriage. It was a beautiful house on the Tennessee River, very private and peaceful atmosphere. It was on a nature trail, so it felt very isolated, though it was close enough to the city for us to go out and have fun. Anyway, we all had a great time in the city, then came back and started a fire in the fire pit. We hung out until we all got tired and eventually went to bed. We all decided to bunk in the same room that had three double bunks and one full bed. It was a large room and we thought we could all watch a movie together in there but ended up all deciding we needed sleep to drive back the next day. As my friends are used to falling asleep early, and I am not, I was still wide awake. So I got on my phone and just started scrolling. I know it's a bad habit, but I had no other options like reading a book or anything because I had to keep it relatively dark for them. So anyway, as I'm laying there, I get this feeling, and it's not a good feeling. I have had one paranormal experience before this, and it didn't make me feel scared. I just felt confused. This was different. I felt the hair stand up, like that feeling of something with ill intent was near me. I look up at the other bunks and my friends look fine. So I continue scrolling and then I get that feeling again. I look up, and this time I look toward the full-size bed where the bride and her little niece, who tagged along, were. And I see a dark figure, head bent, looking down at the niece. My heart all but stopped, I could not move. I kept thinking to myself, it's just a shadow from the stairway light coming in the room, it has to be. I look down at my phone and gather the courage to move my thumbs to text my boyfriend about how scared I was, which didn't help considering he's not a believer in anything of that nature, so he tells me I'm just seeing things. After this, I look up and the figure is gone, which did not make me feel better, only worse because it only confirmed what I saw was not, in fact, a shadow from the light in the stairway. So I jumped from my bunk and bolted up the stairs and crashed on the couch. I felt like a small child who just watched a horror movie. I kept hearing what sounded like creaking from the stairs. I thought of that old phrase, it's just the house settling to calm myself. Then called my boyfriend and he talked me down. And I thought, you know what, he's probably right. But I was still shaken up. Eventually, I fell asleep at about 4 a.m. when the creaking stopped, but I woke up at about 6 and got the courage to go downstairs to get into my bag for clothes. A few minutes later, the maid of honor comes up, and she looks confused and kind of freaked out, and then she says, Hey, uh, did the bride come up here at all? I said, when, because I only slept two hours and I've been up since 6. She says, well, I mean, about that time, I thought I saw her get up and go up the stairs. I said, no, she didn't come up here. She goes, well, I know I saw someone go up the stairs. Her face was white, and I said, did you check the bed? Then she goes back down and looks and says in confusion, she's in bed. So I just stood in confusion as well and said, well, what time did you say you saw her again? She goes, 
It was only a couple of minutes ago. It's just 6.05. I said, well, maybe you just heard me. I've been up here since last night. She says, well, I didn't hear anybody. I thought I saw somebody standing between their suitcases in the bed over her niece. And that's when my heart dropped. And she knew I didn't have to say anything. My face said it all. She knew that I had seen it too. Needless to say, we were happy to get out and not investigate. I felt guilty that I didn't stay downstairs with them to make sure they were okay after she confirmed what I saw. However, I was convinced that it was just my anxiety, and my boyfriend being so skeptical made me think that I was overreacting. But the look on my friend's face of pure confusion and fear confirmed it. I don't know if it's related, but a few months later, I learned one of the supposed most haunted places in Tennessee, Haley's Bar, is located not far from where we stayed. Strange Night in Appalachian, Ohio, by user Delteco22, posted to r slash backwoods creepy. I wasn't sure where to post this, but I needed the validation that I'm not insane. I've never really had paranormal experiences, but I cannot explain this. I'm in college, and me and some other seven people from my school went on a backpacking trip and we had two experienced leaders. We drove to Zaleski State Forest, which is in the Appalachian region of Ohio. It was early April this year, and it was cold, and everything was still dead from winter. After hiking miles into the forest, we set up camp at the backpacking campsite, and there were a couple of other groups of people as well. A few of them were friendly older couples, and then two college-aged girls. Everyone was pretty spread out from each other, and we set up camp farther away from everyone else. I've always been able to sense the energies of places, and the energy in this area wasn't great. It was almost spooky. Each of us had individual one-person tents, and we formed kind of a cluster in this site, with my tent being in the back so that nobody was behind me. Our cluster was also right next to the forest, because this backpacking site was like a big cleared off square in the middle of the trees. Fast forward, I'm dead asleep around 2 a.m., and I wake up to leaves crunching right behind my tent. I hear footsteps walking in circles around my tent. They had a sort of heaviness to them that couldn't be a deer or a dog. Also, it sounded like it was bipedal. I cannot make this up. This creature was circling my tent for long periods of time, slowly creeping up to the sides of my tent, and then just stopping for a while, and then it would move on to walking around the rest of our tent cluster. I could hear a human-like breathing from the mouth whenever it was close to my tent, like a light sort of heaving. I was shaking, too scared to unzip my tent and investigate. I kid you not, this occurred for hours, and it seemed like I was the only one awake. Out of nowhere, I see an illuminated light shape from my tent, although I couldn't tell what it was from inside my tent because it was all zipped up. It was like a warm glow, and it didn't move, like a flashlight would have. I was paralyzed with fear. I simply couldn't believe it was an animal. At some point, I either passed out or fell asleep due to sheer exhaustion, but I could hear the heavy footsteps circling until I did. In the morning, I questioned my fellow campers about it, and my leader admitted she had heard the footsteps and the noises as well, admitting that it was bizarre and she would have investigated had she not been so groggy. One of the boys in the group said he also noticed the light that came on, but thought that it was someone else. Not a single person in this group went up to go to the bathroom or turned on a light that night. I've heard things about the Appalachian regions being creepy and bizarre, 
and now I believe it. Some people have told me that it was probably Bigfoot, because apparently he's associated with light orbs. I've never really been a Bigfoot believer, but I'm telling you, whatever it was, it didn't feel like any animal or a bear. The Appalachian Witch, by a now-deleted user, posted to r slash backwoods creepy. This was the most terrifying moment of my life, and with any luck, it always will be. My family and a friend's family were going on a hiking trip to the Appalachian Mountains. We had rented cabins at a camping site and had arranged certain paths to follow each day of our trip, which was four days long. The first three days went great. We saw wildlife and had a good time and talked a lot. But on the fourth day, we were taking a trail that was more secluded and overgrown than the others. We'd been walking for about 30 minutes when I was hit with this overwhelming feeling of uneasiness. The feeling just stayed there, no matter how hard I tried to shake it off. Then, and everyone else on the hike denies this, I heard singing in a language that I have never heard before. It was like the singing described in the myth of the sirens, sweet and enchanting, yet the music invoked a feeling of fear down to my bones. Everyone else seemed completely oblivious to it. I tried telling my dad that something was wrong, but he just told me I was probably tired and that we would stop soon. So, about five minutes later and the singing just kept getting louder. My heart was racing. We had stopped to rest and eat something as well. I wish with all my heart that we hadn't stopped. About two minutes into our little rest, the singing was getting progressively louder, but my nerves had settled slightly. Then, everything fell silent, and at the same moment, everyone in our group, about 12 people, suddenly turned to the trees to our left. A figure, tall and in a black cloak, was barely visible between the trees. It was a woman, much taller than any normal person, with pure white hair flowing out of her hood. Her head was down, but her face was still slightly visible. All I could make out was that her skin was a very pale yellow, like old paper. As we watched, she just stalked closer to our group, finally stopping right at the edge of the trees. She looked up, and I swear as long as I live and breathe, I will never forget her face. Her eyes were completely whited out, with no pupils or irises visible. She had a thin, pointed nose, and had a mouth with lips that were stained red. I don't want to know why. She stared at us for a moment, and then smiled. It was horrifying. She had no teeth, and her eyes began to shine. And then she began to talk. She had a horrible, scratchy, high-pitched voice, and said, Leave this place while you still can. I'll be watching you. Don't try anything. I blinked and she was gone. Everyone was silent. This is actually my first time telling this story to anyone who didn't experience it with me. And I never discuss it with anyone who did experience it with me. Whether you believe me or not, that's fine. It just feels good to share this experience with someone else. Weird Noises in the Woods by user J.H. Beanco Posted to r slash paranormal when I was in high school, about 15 years ago, 
a group of friends and I were hanging out at our friend Dale's house. For some backstory, we lived way out in the country, also technically part of Appalachia, and the kind of middle of nowhere where the nearest neighbors are a few miles up the road. Dale happened to have a cave near his property that we liked to explore and be dumb teenagers in. To get to the cave, you had to walk roughly a mile through pretty dense woods and cross a big field. We had yet to find the end of the cave system, despite exploring for hours at a time, multiple times. One day, we had spent the better part of the afternoon exploring the caves, and it had gotten dark by the time we emerged. We already had flashlights, so that was no big deal. My memory's a little fuzzy on the exact details, but for some reason our friend Sam decided to go back to the house a little earlier. I want to say we had ordered some pizza or something, and he went to meet the driver, something like that. The rest of us started making our way back through the woods to Dale's house, when we started hearing voices in the woods. We were asking each other if we heard that and where it came from, but we each had a different direction of where we thought it was coming from. It was a childlike voice, and it sounded like talking or whispering, but you couldn't make out what was being said. At this point, we thought one of our friends was just messing with us and started to talk back to it. It sounded like a child giggling, and then our flashlight started to flicker and die. We had one dim light left to get the rest of the way back to the house. We were all thoroughly freaked out, prank or not, and hightailed it back to the house, adrenaline pumping. We all got in the house, shut the door, and I felt a sense of safety for a split second before the crucifix on the wall literally came off the wall, flew, and broke on the floor. It seemed like something out of a bad horror movie, but we all watched it legitimately come off the wall and crash to the ground for no apparent reason. Before that moment, I hadn't been convinced that it wasn't just our other friend Sam messing with us, even though he wasn't really that type. We all started word vomiting at Sam, trying to explain what had just happened and questioning if he had something to do with it. But he genuinely seemed freaked out and confused. He actually said that on his way back to the house earlier, he kept hearing weird things and seeing lights in the woods, and he thought that it was us trying to play a prank on him. I don't know what it was. Maybe our friend is just a great actor, but I honestly don't think it was a prank. The feeling I got in the woods, like every hair was standing on end, goosebumps on my goosebumps, and every fiber of my being screaming to run, I have never felt like that again, and I never want to. Appalachian Ghost Story by user Briar Hobbit Posted to r slash paranormal When I was a kid in my early preteens, I was a little timid. We lived in a mobile home in rural Appalachia, and whenever I would hear my stepdad wake up and make breakfast in the wee hours of the morning, I would creep out of my bedroom and scurry across the house so that I could climb in bed with my mom. On this particular morning, at about 3.30 a.m. or so, my mom had gotten up with my stepdad. She told me to climb in bed, and she'd be there in a little bit. So I did. I'm not sure how much time had passed, but I had dozed off and something woke me up. It was still dark. Something just felt... weird. When I pried open my eyes, a little girl stood by me at the edge of the bed. Her face was obscured by dark, dirty, almost singed-looking hair. She wore what looked like a feed sack dress. I rubbed my eyes, but the little girl was still there. I rolled over, then turned back around, and she was gone. It was a little odd that I didn't freak out, because at that age I was scared of my own shadow. 
but I decided that it was just a really weird dream and I went back to bed. When I woke up later that morning, I told my mom. She would typically tell me what any mother tells their child when they have a nightmare, but she didn't. Instead of reassuring me that it was just a bad dream, she grew silent. I felt uncomfortable, but I didn't ask any more questions until a pastor showed up at our house the next day. The old man had the posture of a candy cane, and I thought he was never going to manage as he struggled to hang prayer claws above the doors. I knew something was up. My mom was not particularly religious. After the elderly gentleman left, I pressed my mom a little harder. She revealed that my stepdad had been seeing the same thing for weeks. She also told me that, through some research, my aunt and grandma had discovered that the place where our home sat was the location of a hay barn fire in the 1930s or 1940s. The fire was presumably started by a little girl, who would have been the same age as the apparition I encountered, and her younger brother. They both perished in the fire. The area had been a coal camp, typically places full of tragedy and destitution, during the early and mid-1900s. The visit stopped. I'm not sure why. I didn't feel that whatever I was seeing was particularly malicious, and I think that's the reason I didn't feel scared. However, later that year, my stepdad went ginseng hunting several miles from our house, and he happened upon a grove of vegetations. He said that he could tell that there was something underneath all of the plants, so he cleared it off, only to find the little girl and boy's graves. That's all I have for you this evening. Thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to keep up with all my uploads, be sure to subscribe and toll the bell to be summoned each and every time we journey into the darkness. Also, be sure to head to ravenreadshorror.com and sign up for the free newsletter so you always know everything that's happening in the Ravenverse and get access to some free content here and there as well. If you have a story that you would like to share, and it's true and paranormal, or at least tame, go ahead to ravenreadshorror.com slash pages slash story and use the form there to submit. Thanks again, and until next time, stay spooky.